This is the fourth session in our series of videos about EMC conducted emission testing. In the previous sessions, we described the test techniques and showed how to optimize the test parameters on our analyzer. In this session, we shall take an actual measurement and analyze the results. Here is the test setup showing the item to be tested, which is a table lamp, the LISN, the pre-selector and the analyzer, with a PC running the EMC engineer software. We'll first turn the lamp on. On the PC, we select the input device, which is the LISN, and then the preamplifier, then the attenuation level. This has been chosen as shown in the previous session to be 10 dBs. And also select the appropriate limit. In this case, we use EN55015, which shows a quasi peak and the average limit levels. Also note that we are using the 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz range, which is band B, as the initial result seen in the previous session showed that the emissions in band A were well below the limits. For this initial scan, we have used a peak detector. This is standard procedure as it gives the quickest result. The limits, however, relate to quasi-peak and average detectors, so these are not really relevant to the peak detector we have just measured. The standards do state that if the peak result is below both limits, the product is compliant. Unfortunately, in this case, the peak result is clearly above the limits, so we must now use the quasi-peak and average detectors to check the compliance of the product. However, the requirements of the EMC standard dictate that these detectors are slow, so to scan the whole band would take significant time. But we can improve productivity by choosing to select only those frequencies of interest. This can be done using marker points mode. In this mode, we can choose frequencies by dragging and clicking the cursor. Notice how the system automatically gives us a zoomed window so that we can select the frequency very accurately. Also note how the list is sorted into frequency order regardless of the order in which we select the markers. Just one more, and there we have a selection of five markers. All have a red background because they are all above the limits. The list includes frequency value, limit level, and the margin above or below the limit. If we select marker points mode here, the table is updated in real time, and we can see the update scrolling through the list. We can select quasi-peak results, which shows one failed frequency, and average results, which shows four failures. We can display the results in bar graph format. I'll just drag the window over here so as not to cover the plot. The vertical scales are normalized so that the limit level is in the middle of the axis. We can show both quasi-peak and average results, so now we have a complete picture of the compliance of the product. We have an uncertainty margin which we can be specified in this field. Any results that are below the limit by less than this margin are shown as yellow bars on our display. Clearly points 2, 3, 4 and 5 are well above the average limits. These relate to the narrowband emissions, whilst marker 1, which relates to the broadband level, appears to be OK, despite having the highest level when measured with the peak detector. Now I'll just switch the lamp off to see the effect on the emissions. Note how marker 1 level reduces significantly, but the other markers remain the same. So this product appears to be EMC failure, even when it's switched off. To investigate further, we can look at the emissions in more detail at just one frequency by using the single mode. We can drag and place the cursor to the frequency where the emissions are highest. Start SF, accept the frequency, we can adjust it if we want. The lamp is still switched off and the levels are all low. Switch the lamp on and the levels immediately increase. All three detectors are plotted in the peak, which is highest, then quasi peak, and then average order. We can switch peak off, which is not really relevant to the limits. And we can see that at this frequency, quasi peak and average are okay. 
below their respective limits. This corresponds to the results as seen at marker number one on the tabular display. Now let's stop this and return to the scan. With the table lamp still switched off, we can start another sweep, this time with all detectors selected. Note that I have speeded up the scan by a factor of 5 and will just cover the frequency range up to about 2 MHz, as this covers the band of most interest. I can now zoom on this area by changing to linear frequency axis. Note how the interesting low frequencies become compressed. This is why log frequency axis is generally used for this work. Now I can enter a finished frequency of about 2 MHz and here is the zoomed spectrum showing quite clearly a harmonic series of narrowband peaks. I can measure these peaks by right-clicking on the screen and selecting the values item. I can now drag a cursor to my first peak, read off its levels and frequency. Now I'll just move the window out of the way a bit. Then look at these other peaks too. Note how the frequencies are all multiples of about 250 kilohertz. A classic harmonic series with a fundamental at 250 kilohertz. This brings us to the end of this session. In the next session, we will show you some more analysis of the emissions and the techniques for storing and retrieving results.